Captain's log, Stardate 6947.4. The Enterprise is at station keeping alongside the USS Yorktown to embark Federation Senior Historian Charles Attenborough to accompany us as an expert consultant during our investigation of an alien satellite just discovered orbiting planet Sigma Draconis 6. We are also conducting some crew exchange with the Yorktown. That's the last of the crew transfers. Yorktown signals that Professor Attenborough is ready to transport. Very well, Mr. Kyle. Energize. Welcome aboard the Enterprise, Professor Attenborough. Flint? Where's Professor Attenborough? Hello, Captain. I am Attenborough. I see. Just as you were Da Vinci and Brahms. Yes. As you know, I made my identity known when I came back to Earth two years ago. However, my notoriety was too great. I'm a private man. I had returned to Earth to help the Federation with its study of history, Captain. Not to become a figure of public curiosity and intrusive scrutiny. Of course. And so? With the blessing of the Federation Council, I assumed the peacefully mundane identity of Federation historian Attenborough. You may still call me Flint, if you wish. Welcome aboard, Mr. Flint. May I introduce Lieutenant Paul Erickson, my archaeology and anthropology officer. My God, it is you! I attended a lecture you gave at Roddenberry Center. It was amazing! Mr. Flint, you are history! I have a million questions, sir. Erickson here will be at your disposal throughout your stay aboard. He'll help you with anything you might need. Thank you, Captain. Lieutenant, show our esteemed guest to his quarters, and let's keep it to only a thousand questions, shall we? Of course, sir. Bridge, this is the Captain. Bridge, Spock here. Mr. Spock. Signal to Yorktown that we're leaving. Set a course for the Sigma Draconis system. Warp factor 6. Acknowledged. Captain's personal log. We are en route to the Sigma Draconis system. The Federation historian joining us on this mission is in fact Flint the Immortal. Records show he has been very helpful to Federation historians, which is not surprising considering that he has known, or has been, some of the most important and influential people in Earth's history. We still don't have a complete list of all the people he has been. In the short two years that he has been back on Earth, he has written or co-written 47 books on the history of Earth and its colonization of the solar system. I have some misgivings about him being on his mission, but there is no denying that he is more than qualified as an expert on ancient civilizations. Paganini, Brahms, as far as music is concerned, Mr. Flint, were you only active in the classical period? Only classical music, Doctor? I wouldn't call big band music classical. Big band music? Jazz? As Glenn Miller, I appreciated the freedom, unpredictability, and emotion of jazz. The abandon. That was the, the 1920s. Late 1930s is more like it. 1923 to 1944. Only 20 years? Why such a short time? Why will have to remain my secret, Doctor, I'm afraid. However brief, I was pleased that my band brought so much happiness to my audiences. Happiness? But wasn't the whole country in the grips of the Great Depression? You were there, Mr. Flint. Would you say that financial hardship or fear of impending world war affected the mood of the people more as when... Maybe you can lay off the questions for a while, Paul. Mr. Flint, I'm sorry if... That's quite all right, Doctor. I find his youth and enthusiasm refreshing. You must understand that while I've lived over a hundred lifetimes, I was only ever young. Once. We were talking about music from a long time ago. I'm also interested in history. Music history. 
Mr. Flynn, would you consider giving a brief concert here on the ship? As brief or as long as you'd like. Share your unique understanding of the history of music. Your music. Oh, yes, sir. The crew would love it. Well, I'm not sure. Captain? It's fine with me, Maestro. The answer is yes. It's the least I can do to show my appreciation for allowing me to take part in this mission. Captain, your first visit to the Sigma Draconis system was... somewhat strange. Yes, quite unusual. What were your impressions of the planet? Well, Mr. Flint, it was a race against time. Commander Spock's life was at stake. Our efforts were directed solely at finding Spock's brain and those responsible for its removal. We had little time to study their culture. Of course. Mr. Spock, any trepidations about returning there? Trepidation would be a human emotion. I associate no such bad feelings with that star system. It was simply the sight of a very unfortunate set of circumstances. Poppycock, you're trying to tell us that nothing about Sigma Dracona 6 makes that green ice water you call blood run even colder? Please, Doctor, spare us your constant display of sophomoric gibberings and kindly confine your lack of sophistication to mere medical matters. You may convince them, Spock, but I know better. So when we reach the system, try not to lose your head. Again. Preach to Captain Kirk. Kirk here, Lieutenant. I really stand up support, Captain. We are on course for Sigma Dakota 6. ETA now, 13 hours, 27 minutes. All systems show green. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Eriks. Kirk out. We'll be arriving at that space station early tomorrow morning. I am looking forward to seeing what kind of satellite could be orbiting that once technologically advanced planet. The rudimentary sensors on board the transport ship Deirdre that noticed it two days ago could only say that it didn't match any known configuration, and that it wasn't there when they passed by three days earlier. Either it's a very new object recently placed there by someone, or it is a very old station that is just now detectable. If it was built by the very technologically advanced ancestors of the Imorgs that you encountered on Stardate 5431, there may be much to learn from a study of its systems. It makes for quite a mystery. Well, here's to mysteries.